and I started out the uh, first time many, many years ago. We've had a lot of our dreams come true. Now we want you to share with us our latest and greatest dream. Walt Disney spent his life creating entertainment for children the world over. But some lucky kids actually got to work alongside him at his Burbank studio. And they share special memories of a man most of us only knew from afar. Being a Mouseketeer, working for Walt Disney, working for the studio, knowing Walt Disney was a great experience. It changed my life. I first learned about giving back to society through the Disney studio. And when I say Disney studio, it's Mr. Disney because he set the tone. He was just a brilliant man. Walt's first star was a little girl named Virginia Davis, who appeared in his Alice comedies in the 1920s. Other young people followed over the next four decades. When the studio was making its first animated feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Walt hired a teenage girl from Hollywood High School, whose father was a famous dancing teacher, and who would later gain fame herself as Marge Champion. It was very tedious and yet a lot of fun to work at Disney. It was two girls who were uh, made up the Snow White character as either the voice or the model. And I would go to work in the morning. They would show me the storyboards. It was happening on a sound stage at the old Hyperion studio that they had rigged up very simply. I must say that I was always so happy to go over there because it was like an enormous playground in some ways. The animators were an extremely interesting and free bunch of guys. So interesting that at that time, I married one of them just before I was 18. They would play terrible tricks on each other and also sometimes put on little skits for each other. More than 20 years later, he took a hands-on approach to hiring teen idol Tommy Sands to appear in his live-action musical, Babes in Toyland. I first met him when I was doing a picture called Love in a Goldfish Bowl at Paramount. And he came by to see the rushes one day. And afterwards, he came and met me on the set and told me that he was going to put me in Babes in Toyland. And I was thrilled to be co-starring with Annette Funicello, who I had seen as a Mouseketeer. And I, like many other young teenagers, was secretly in love with Annette. I had watched her for years on The Mouseketeers. But Disney's most enduring association with young people came in the 1950s with the creation of the Mickey Mouse Club, a daily television show that made stars out of talented boys and girls who might have lived next door to anyone watching the series. Those cast members have happy memories of their experiences at the studio and of Mr. Disney himself. My official entrance into the Mouseketeer Club, Annette came up and kissed me on the forehead. Becoming a Mouseketeer will probably be an event that will never be topped in my life as far as perception of, you know, amazing. He came up to you and I one day on the Hardy Boys and he said, hi, I'm Walt Disney, and he shook my hand. And you were standing right there. We were shooting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm Walt Disney. I said, how do you do, Mr. Disney? The first time I ever saw Walt Disney was at the final audition for the Mickey Mouse Club. First of all, I went out to read for Spin and Marty, the cowboy series, and they said, well, do you sing and dance? I said, well, that's mainly what I do, and I happen to have my tap shoes in the car. I was finally picked after five auditions by Walt Disney himself. The kids didn't have a lot of contact with the boss, but Tim Considine discovered a foolproof way of generating a conversation. Anytime you wanted to talk to Mr. Disney, all you would have to say is, Anything new at the park, Mr. Disney? And he would stop. He'd say, oh, yeah, let me show you what I'm doing. And he'd turn around, take you back into the building, up to his office, where he had like a ping pong table, but with Disneyland on it, <laughs> and tell you what he was then, we're going to put this over here, and this is going to be great, because I'm going to have a little train moving over here. And, and that was when I saw him the most animation, no pun intended, from Walt Disney, was when he was talking about Disneyland. We would see Walt Disney walking down the street and he always looked like he was deep in thought because he had so many projects going at that time. You know, in 1955, it was Disneyland was opening, Lady and the Tramp, and then Sleeping Beauty, and he was on the Disneyland show, and the Mickey Mouse Club, and so on and so forth. So he always looked like he was just deep in thought and creativity and all. We were all a little bit in, in awe of him and also maybe a little scared of him. 
Only because we knew he was the boss. It wasn't that terror kind of awe, you know? It was, a, it was a loving respect out of kindness in the way he treated us always. So when we'd see him coming, I mean, we wouldn't go up and say, hi, Walt, and slap him on the back. We'd just say, hello, Mr. Disney. And, you know, he seemed to know our names a lot. We'd cross him in the street, and he'd say, hi, Don. Because you know, I was always very impressed that he knew our names. Of course, we had our names across our shirts at that time. Most importantly, these young performers felt at home at the Disney studio. He provided well for our parents, places for them to be. Oftentimes, parents would be stuck in the back of a sound stage. He provided for it in the theater oh, lounge, like and they could go in and watch all of the different shows that were being edited and filmed. It was a wonderful, wonderful environment. It was a protected and safe environment. And he was tolerant of his kids, you know. He wasn't of disrespect, but of kids' annex and stuff. You know, sometimes you get a group of kids together. I don't care how professional I am. We'd hide sometimes and go play tag in the tunnels under the studio. And, of course, we always took a net with us. <laughs> we figured we were safe if we had a net with us. What I really enjoy doing as a Mouseketeer is sneak in next door to the next soundstage, and Walt Disney would be doing his introductions to his Disneyland show but it was completely black, and there he would be, almost like an audio animatronic, and he would almost do it perfect on the first take, but he was like your uncle or your grandpa. I mean, he had such a warmth coming from the Midwest, the way it was, so I, I always enjoyed doing that. We would see Walt Disney at the back of the studio watching some of our uh, run-throughs and all, and I understand he watched the dailies on the Mickey Mouse Club and made suggestions. You knew when he was coming on the set, because, you know, the vibes in the air changed. You know, all of a sudden it was like, my, are we in a cathedral or something? There was a hush that went through. And he just kind of glided in the background. And there was no entourage, nothing. He would just he would just appear. And you'd look over and say, wow, that's Walt Disney over there. Walt Disney's here. And there is a song cue. One special doll. When I was on the set doing Babes in Toyland, he took me around all over the Walt Disney Studios and showed me how things worked up above the ground and then took me down below the ground. He wasn't known for dispensing compliments to children or adults, but he could make his feelings known to a third party. I ran into him at the Thalian Ball. I'm in a tux and, uh, and I went to the hall and there is Walt Disney standing with Luella Parsons and some other big, big wigs. And I uh, saw so him, I caught his eye and and he said, oh, come over. Put his hand on my shoulder and he said, this is my lucky actor. He said to Luella Parsons. And uh, I never forgot that. The Mouseketeers' heyday was 50 years ago, but their memories of Walt Disney are vivid and steadfast. He was a magic maker, a magician, and, uh, and we all really revered him. It really is, is a highlight, knowing Walt Disney. From, from my standpoint, here I've been in this business all my life, but he's one of the icons in my life who I'm really happy I met. It was a, one best experience, you know. And, but the opportunity that he gave us, how could we not love him and want to honor his memory forever?